At a recent Camera Club competition, the judge suggested that an author should have used the HDR technique to be able to cope with the contrast within the image they had presented in competition. HDR is an acronym for High Dynamic Range. It's a technique in photography where we capture and combine multiple exposures of the same scene. It creates a final image that has a much wider range of tones than a single shot could capture. Now, apart from some extreme exceptions, never say never is one of my mottos, my first thought when I heard the judge comment that HDR was the solution was, oh no, it isn't. Now, I really wasn't trying to be a smart ass here, and I kept my thoughts to myself, but image editing evolves, and what was once considered a standard practice is very quickly overtaken by new technology. In my world, HDR is almost a thing of the past. As I said, I won't rule it out completely, but I just don't need it anymore. I'm guessing that the contrast improvements I've noticed over the past few years are a result of better sensors in our cameras with more pixels we can capture, software that can lift detail from the shadows much better than it once could, and of course AI masks and noise suppression within our image editing software. One of my most common techniques of the past 10 years or so would have been exposure blending. Using three images in a similar technique to HDR, and I've made quite a number of videos over the years demonstrating and singing the praises of exposure blending. But I rarely use that now either. Here's an image shot from a Mavic Pro drone capturing 20 megapixels. I think most of us would agree that it's a little bit underexposed. It wasn't really a dedicated photo session, more a practice flight for me. I just flew the drone straight up, fired off a few shots and brought it back down. Now looking at the image months later, as we are here in Adobe Camera Raw, I hit the auto button and the result appears to take me in the right direction. Now I'm treating the auto button here like a preset, but I've just raised quite a bit of detail from the shadows and there's going to be a penalty to pay for that. Let me zoom in and we'll take a look. There we're up to just about 100% and we can quite clearly see there's quite a bit of noise in the foreground and probably slightly less in the sky. The noise we're seeing here is exactly why we used HDR and exposure blending in the past. But I'm going to rely on my software's ability to help me with this. So the first thing we need to do is to get the best contrast, clarity and colour we can from the image and then we'll take a look at the noise. As I hit Control zero to fit the image back on screen, it's the sky that has most of the impact here. So let's concentrate on what's good and improve on that. Now I don't think there's too much further I can go with the global changes in this image because I'd like to darken the sky, but if I do that globally, I'm gonna affect the bottom half or the bottom third and I'd rather not do that. But the one thing I would like to change a little bit is the color balance. I'm going to select my white balance tool, looking into the picture to an area which I think should be neutral in color, maybe the shadows on these mountains here. So let me just click. That's the sort of thing I'm looking for, but perhaps it's taking it just a little bit too far. So what I'm gonna do is just back off with the temperature a little bit, but I think I'm happy with that. Maybe I'll take a little bit of that magenta too, but it's just warmed it up a little bit. Now to make some improvements to the sky, I usually reach for the graduated mask, but I'm gonna start here by selecting the entire sky. So going to my masks on the right hand side, I'm gonna to click to select the sky. I rarely start like this. I think this image is a bit of an exception. I think it, the sky will take a bit of 
manipulation before we get to the graduated mask. So I'm going to drop the highlights down. We can see that's affecting the sky a little bit. Let me drop the exposure down a little bit. But I'm going to drop down to the blacks and whites because if I can separate these two, I'm going to add some impact into that sky and with contrast. So maybe a little bit to the left and the whites a little bit to the right. Now you can see the difference that's making. It's given me a little bit of a problem here, but I don't worry too much about those. But I don't think I can go any further with that mask that I've selected. What I'd like to do next is to select a graduated mask. So let's do that from this option. I'm going to select the linear gradient. I'm going to start from midway because I don't want to make the changes right on the horizon. So now I'm going to drop the exposure a little bit more. Maybe the blacks a little more. Spread the whites. Highlights, is that having an effect? A little bit. And there you can see we're starting to have a bit more impact now. Now we can see that on the top left corner we've got a light area there. So it may be a good idea to take a look at that next. So going up to the top left, I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut here. If I tap the G key, I get a new linear mask or graduated mask. Click and drag. You can see the area I'm interested in here. The great thing about these masks is we can make the change. Then we can adjust the mask if we don't think we've got it right. But of course, the more you use them, you don't generally get quite good at making the selections you need. But here... I need my highlights down again because we do have a few there, but it's not having a great effect. So maybe the exposure. Now I want to go down quite low with this exposure because it's this area here I want to drop down, but it's making the top edge a little bit too dark. But I don't worry too much about that either because I'm going to take it down to where I think it's right. I think I'm bringing up the warm tones a little too much, so maybe I'll just drop the temperature a little bit in that top corner, just balance things up. But if I feel that top edge is too dark, I go to subtract, brush, keep my flow rate quite low. My brush is more or less the size I need and I can just brush over that so I can have the best of both worlds. But if we were looking at this image fairly critically, We've got a little bit of weakness right along the top edge when we compare it to the bottom. So maybe I could squeeze even another filter in here, another linear mask. So touching the G key once again, you see the mask appears in the mask panel. And I just want a simple mask here. I may have to bring my picture away from that panel. But what I'm going to do here is much the same as before. Just darken it down a little bit. Need to have a look around. Now it looks okay because we've got a balance between both sides. So what I'm going to do here is go back to my basic tab and just have a few seconds time out. Now I think I still have a little bit of a weakness right in this area here. It's very minimal I know, but I think it's important to deal with these slight little light areas, but I think I can possibly deal with that better in Photoshop when we open it in a few moments. What I'd like to do is something about this area in the center of the sky. So I'm going to go to my options and we've got a few here. But I'm going to go to my old faithful, which is the healing brush. I've got no feather as you can see. I've got a size of about 14. That doesn't look too bad actually. I could probably go a bit smaller. Opacity set at 100. Let me have a look and see how that's going to impact that. I don't like that too much. I think not many people would spot it, but it's not perfect, is it? So let's try a smaller brush. If that doesn't work, go back to this option and I'm going to try to just replace that. When I tried this sometime earlier, that didn't work too well either. Either. Works a little bit better, but you can see a bit of color in there. So I'm not happy with that. Control Z to undo it. Now we can either use the clone tool, but I think again, I'd rather leave this until I open it up into Photoshop. 
So now is the time when I really need to fine tune the density of the image. If I want to drop it back with the exposure. Do I want to add a little bit of clarity? Maybe a little bit of clarity there, a little bit more color. There's not a great deal of color in it apart from the greens in the base. But of course the one important factor is the noise. So what I'm going to do is click that and we'll apply the noise and then we'll open this up into Photoshop. I'm going to click just over this roadway here so we can see a before and after. I'm going to set the amount to 50 which is the default. So as I click into this panel you can see by the little pop-up that's without the enhancements, that's with the enhancements and that's looking pretty good. Let's try another area here, let's try it over in the trees there. There again quite bad noise there but it does a superb job. I don't think I need anything more than 50 but of course we can increase this if we feel it's necessary. So I'm going to click to enhance and what Photoshop or Adobe Camera Raw is currently doing is making a complete copy of this, saving it into Bridge alongside the original image I started with as a DNG file, it says that here, but that amounts to being the same raw file as I began with. Trying to talk until it completes because I want to take you back into Bridge and just show you that thumbnail. So before I started I did make a copy as you can see on the left hand side so this is the thumbnail with no work done. The thumbnail on the right was all of the work we did in Adobe Camera Raw a few moments ago but when I applied the noise reduction the thumbnail in the center was created automatically for me. Now when I open my file into Photoshop which we're going to go to next this, the center file here is the one we're going to view. Now the image is opened up into Photoshop. It's a little bit harder to see the weakness that I saw in Camera Raw a few seconds ago. But nevertheless, I'm going to go to my options here and select my burn tool. From the options at the top of the screen, I'm going to select shadows. I'm going to drop the exposure down to about 10%. Going to change the size of the brush down to about that size and I just want to wipe a little bit along the top there. Maybe a slightly bigger brush just to hold that in nicely. And now turn my attention to that little bit of sky in the middle. Now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to pick up my healing brush, the spot healing brush. So we'll just do that little bit, that looks okay. I'll do that little bit, I'll just do it a little bit at a time, make sure I'm happy. We'll do the little bit on the right, that looks pretty good, and that bit there. And now I've just got the large bit in the middle. And I think if I hit Control zero, I think we'd be happy with that repair. Now quite often with my photography, and I think it's particularly relevant to camera clubs and competitions, I sometimes try to enhance any leading lines that may be in the picture or areas of interest. Now here we've got that road that runs through the image. I wonder if I can just warm that up by giving it a little more saturation and maybe a little bit more saturation in the sky in the distance there. To do that I'm going to select my sponge tool. From the options at the top of the screen, saturate is what I want, a flow of around about 10%, 11 will do nicely and I just want to wipe over this area just adding a little more colour and maybe down the road as well. Maybe a touch on the green just to bring our focus there. But I'm not sure I can do a great deal more here. But what I'd like to do is to try one of the filters that I kind of like, the Nick filters, to see if I can improve on that sky. 
Before applying the nick filters that I want, I would normally suggest we make a copy of the thumbnail in the layers on the right hand side, but I know that the filter system is going to do that for me. So I'm going to go to my filters, down to my nick collection. These are quite old. These are the old free ones that were available quite a while ago. I want Color Effects Pro 4. And the option I want will probably be selected for me because it's the one I use almost all of the time when I'm going to use them. And if I scroll down, it's this one here, Tonal Contrast. And you can see the effect it's having on the image. We can compare the two by clicking and releasing and we can see quite a lot of difference. Now we have settings on the right hand side but I'm just going to click OK and allow this to open up into Photoshop. Now we know it's always best to duplicate a layer before doing any work on an image but I'm guessing you've heard that many times before. In this scenario it does allow me to temper the effect of the Nick filter because I don't think I need that tonal contrast effect on the foreground as well as the sky. So to achieve that, I can simply add a mask. I'm going to keep this pretty simple. Go into my toolbox, I'm going to select a brush, just a basic soft edged brush. You can see the flow rates around 40%. Well, that's going to be variable depending on each of us. The size of the brush can also be changed with those square bracket keys to the right of the letter P. But here if I wanted to just mask over this area, I can do that and just take away the worst of that effect over the trees because as I said, I don't think they really need it. But I may decide to leave the effect on the road. I could leave it in that little patch of green there. They're all going to be personal choices. A little tip here if you need it. If you hold the Alt key and click the mask, you can see the mask. So if there's a couple of areas you think you've missed, then you can always correct them while looking at this in its entirety. Just hit the little eye and they'll all come back. Of course, I'd always suggest that we save our work as a Photoshop file, retaining all the layers, but I'm making a video we need to speed up. So to bring this to a close, I'm going to go to this option at the top right and choose to flatten the image to finish. Now, as we view the original raw untouched image here and compare it to the completed one, there is a massive difference in appeal. The noise suppression has certainly helped me to achieve that here. If I could just drift off topic for a moment here. My Mavic Pro drone cannot compete with my Canon 5D for image quality, but maybe we photographers do allow ourselves to get a little bit hijacked in our quest to capture millions of pixels and super sharp images. I know I've certainly done that, but there are lots of times when impeccable quality is just not the be-all and end-all. And maybe this image is an example of that. An image is generally good because of the content, the lighting, the viewpoint, the composition, how we edit the image to create the mood. It's certainly not the camera we used or how many pixels it captures. And I'll leave you with that thought. Now I hate to keep asking this, but I have to. Please give me a like, the thumbs up, if you think the video is worthy of it. Until the next time.